All right, good evening, good morning, everyone. Good Welcome to our regular scheduled council meeting for February 21st, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. Uh, Ms. Berger, if you would call roll, please. Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. Here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston is out. Councilman Lindsay is also out. And Councilman Rodewald. Here. Five members present. Right, thank you very much. Let's see. And tonight's invocation will be done by Fire Chief President. Father Lord, we thank you for the day and all thy many blessings and many favors. Please be in this meeting. Guide us in your way that let thy perfect will be done. Bless our first responders, our troops, and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Alrighty, moving on, uh, action on the uh, February 6th regular meeting council, meeting minutes. Move to accept. Thank you. Second. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor and second by Mr. Baum. Any discussion on those minutes, council? When you're ready. All right. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Those minutes are accepted 5 0. Thank you very much. Communications, non city managers, Port, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, um, members of the YouTube audience. And members of administration, I'd like to uh, go over the city manager report. And we will start with the police report with uh, Deputy Garment. Thank you. Council, citizens, very lively audience. Yes, they are. Okay. Rowdy. Um, in January, the New Carlisle deputies were dispatched to a total of uh, 180 calls for service for the month of January. Of those calls, 31 reports were taken. We had 26 assists, seven criminal arrests. Of those arrests, one was a felony arrest, four were misdemeanor arrests, two were warrant arrests. We had 49 traffic stops with 17 traffic warnings and 32 moving violations. Uh, we had 465 business checks and three traffic crashes. It. Council, any questions for Deputy Garman? Uh, sir? Uh, only question I had, those, the numbers you gave don't match what we have in our packets, so I don't know. Updated. They, um, hmm? Our Sergeant Lehman updated it because he okay. missed some of the <coughs> stuff, so he sent okay. an updated email. When? Remember where he said he forgot to include my arrest? Oh, yeah, I didn't catch that. Okay. This is the updated one. Okay. That was my apology. I must have missed that attachment. Just so we can, yeah. I'll email it out to you guys for Updated sure. or whatever. No big deal. Yep. Uh, Deputy Garman, would you care to introduce your sure. other yeah. deputy that's with you this, this evening? This is um, Deputy Tim Arnold. He's from Tip City. You know, say anything? Or <laughs> you don't have to. You don't, you don't have, have to. to. Yeah. So is he being trained for your... Uh, he's gonna, well, uh, we don't know yet because he doesn't know if he wants to come to second or stay at, on uh, the 7 feet of 3A ship. Okay. So he's in phase three of his FTO. So that's the last phase before they begin the shadow phase where they're kind of on their own and then the FTO ends up shadowing them, going to calls. Basically, they handle all the calls and just we're the silent observer then during the shadow phase. And, see how they handle everything and you know, report back there. Once he's done with that, he's cut loose and he's on his own. So okay. he uh, recently got his cruiser and all of his equipment. So he's driving in his own uh, New Carlisle owned cruiser. Okay. And it's Harris's that he got, so yeah. Great. All right, thank you. For us old people, what's his name again? Uh, Deputy Tim Arnold. Tim thank Arnold. you. Yep. Yeah. All right. Huh? All right. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Welcome. Okay. <laughs> yep. 
Thank you, Deputy Garman. Uh, moving on with the city manager report under fire and, fire and EMS report, uh, Fire Chief Steve Trusty. Mayor, Council, uh, for the month of January, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 95 EMS calls in the city, six in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to 10 fire related calls in the city and one in Elizabeth Township. We had three EMS calls answered by mutual aid, either by Pike Township or Bethel Clark, due to Medic 52 being on a response. We answered two mutual aid calls for Pike Township. We answered four mutual aid calls for Bethel Clark. Council, any questions for Char Fire Chief? All right, thank you very much, Chief. Appreciate it as always, sir. Thank you, Fire Chief. And moving on to the City Manager Report, our finance report presented by Ms. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Council. The uh, finance reports are for the month of January, and we had receded $978,586.95. For the month of January, our expenditures were $782,712.86. Uh, beginning balance, fund balance in, uh, for the 1st of January was $7,510,472.46. And with the uh, revenue I just reported in expenditures, we have some encumbrances. Those are open purchase orders for $1,372,272.15, which leaves an ending available fund balance at the end of January as $6,334,074.40. The bank accounts are all reconciled. On the Income tax collection for the month of January for this year, we've receded $144,974.32. So it's to a little over 2% above January of 2022. And the mayor's court for the month of January receded in fines and court costs a total of $2,181. Uh, I'll entertain any questions. Excuse me. The mayor's court is holding its own financially. It's ran a little. When I gave you the end of the year um, in January, we were still around three thousand in the negative. So That's because we um, first set up that. Yeah, for everything we did, so it, it's getting really close to a break even. Probably cool. two more months. All right, thank you. And I'll get you an update next month. Anyone else? Mr. Mayor, I move we accept the financial. Second. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Roybal to accept the report. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Accepted 5-0. Thank you very much. And back to you, Mr. Bridge. We have a motion to approve the Mayor's Court Report. Sorry. Sir? Anyone? Mr. Mayor. Mayor's Court? So moved. Mayor's, Mayor's Court, Court Report. report. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Motion to accept the Mayor's Court Report. Second. Second by Mr. Vice Mayor. Councilman Bond? Yes. Thank you. Councilman <laughs> Cook? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Accept at 5 0. The movers and seconders aren't here. I'm not used to this. I know. <laughs> right. That's what I was thinking. As soon as someone had to make the first motion, I'm like, how's this going to go? <laughs> That's what you meant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, moving on with the city manager report, our service report presented by Mr. Kiko, our director of public service uh, and assistant city manager. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, members of the council, and members of our uh, virtual audience. Uh, under Public Works Department, we have uh, continuously been trimming trees so far this winter. Uh, it's been great to have a mild winter so far. We have uh, gotten a purchase order request already in and approved to go ahead and do some stump grinding. We rented it for a week, so you, you'll see a lot of stumps that we've been um, uh, saving up over the last couple years. We'll be out uh, grinding stumps and stuff with that as well. Uh, Streetlight proposal, uh, we asked for an update in the middle of last week, still awaiting AES approval on their poll to get it put up. I honestly, I'll shoot another email out, but I don't know why it's taking so long. But it's in AES's hands, so. Under the Water Department, um, sanitary survey uh, was January 19th and 20th, has been completed with no violations. 
Um, we have some recommendations uh, that you know we're working on, and I had spoke uh, before on the big one is our private wells. Well, let me before I get to that on um, backflow preventers currently with businesses, and then rentals that are four or more um, uh, spaces in a rental. We are you know we we are we're staying at 100% compliance. Um, there's just a few stragglers that have what we saw were from ownership changes. Didn't know that they had to get that, got this letter, didn't know what it meant. So but we were at 100% and EPA is aware of that. Now on to the private wells. I'll be speaking with our representative probably the, this week or early next week on going further with the information on wells. We have about 42, I think. So we're kind of jumping around on, do we want to inspect all 42 every year? So we have to put a little camera down, make sure it's you know not doing whatever. Uh, backflow preventers run about a hundred bucks to uh, have them inspected every year by the homeowner. But we're trying to, I've been talking with the water superintendent going, what is the best way to be able to do 40 some wells in a year? Doesn't sound like much, but we gotta go out document. And then we also have to have the homeowner sign an agreement that they will not violate the Ohio administrative code and never hook it up because then there's fines, penalties, all that kind of stuff. So there's still some things to go, but I'm not a big fan of, from a municipality, still putting a backflow preventer on someone who just waters their lawn out by their sidewalk. So we're trying to stay away from that as much as possible. Uh, well four pitless adapter was installed the other day. Um, we did get the concrete put in earlier today. As soon as that's cured, we got some wiring to finish up and we will get well four um, finished up and get it back in service. Two hydrants so far were replaced. Uh, we do have about four or six more in stock that we got to uh, get done. However, we did run into a minor issue again with our brine. We did some major digging last week. We have our whole softener system offline and found two, I try to keep it simple, backwash valves that were broken and it, it, we had no clue until we drained everything and we happened to be backwashing a filter which is still connected to the system and we had a camera up inside the piping and watched water come flood into the softeners. It's like, this isn't supposed to happen. So we had two valves broken. When one was broken, we didn't have an issue. We would have never, we would have never probably found a brine issue. When two broke, when one was brining, it was pushing it to the other one. We just had no clue how it was getting there. Well, now we know. So um, I'll be speaking with the EPA and the district EPA because you're allowed to have your system off for 14 days. And then they say, you gotta get it back online. Well, we still, this stuff could take months to get these materials. As a matter of fact, the valves that are in there are obsolete. They were obsolete, I guess, about four or five years after the plant went online in 06. So they said the new one will fit, but they need to make these couplers for us. So just know that there's, we're working with them to try and get uh, this put back in and in service to where the water is going to be hard for a while and we can get it softened back down. But we're definitely working on that. Um, <coughs> moving on to the uh, sewer department, the clarifier one and two, uh, I've already approved some submittals for those. So then it'll just go into manufacturing. Those are looking to be the end of the year or the very beginning of 24 for install. Uh, manufacturing is taking anywhere from 32 to 36 weeks after submittal approval. Plant expansion study, I just received, we were off yesterday, but I did receive the scope from Burgess and Nipal to do various parts of the engineering study. I will be getting with Mr. Bridge on um, the, the levels in the scope. They're broken down into each category with their own pricing, and it will tell us all the way from what we have to where we need to be at each phase of these developments as they go, that type of thing. So um, in the end, we'll probably have to get an ordinance um, with uh, Mr. Bridge and bring it to council so we can move on for the, for the study. Uh, road resurfacing, I'm already working with the county to see what roads, um, get some pricing, see what we can get done there, along with some ADA ramps with those. Fenwick Drive reconstruction phase two, we did a final walk survey, final walkthrough, so right now, the, uh, et the estimate should be available into the county probably within the month or sometime in early March and they'll be put out for bid for a total reconstruction. Moving down to the Carlisle Park phase one, um, I had signed that agreement the other day. They were out today surveying the area so we can get the plans drawn up for that and then that will go to the county for bidding. 
And then the uh, downtown curbs, uh, Choice One was also out today uh, surveying the area so we know what part that uh, with BNN's um, study that we will have to get done with the curbs and the ADA ramps. And then two, I can just tell you the water department, wastewater department, we're busy today with locates. We had 16 wood pole replacements with the Cobra lights. I don't know if you've been seeing them. They're replacing a lot of those. And then we had all the parks to locate utilities. So they were just basically um, locating those. NatureWorks grant um, agreement has been signed. And then I'll be moving on for the next steps to uh, uh, follow their, their guidelines uh, to getting uh, those gazebos ordered. And that is all I have on that report. I can entertain any questions on there or anything that I didn't cover. So any questions for Mr. Kitko and his report? Mr. Cook. <clears throat> Howie, I got a couple of calls in regards to uh, the parks. They're in the north end and they graffiti. Has anybody looked at those? And... I, I believe, and I didn't get the chance to check it out, but I believe all the graffiti is off as of today. Okay. We, got, we took care of it this morning, had to go out and paint. We had to get some solvent to clean the... Um, Playset, the plastics, and I believe we got it covered, but we're going to have to paint the whole open shelter. But we did get all the graffiti covered up. Okay. But there's more to follow up on that as well. I'm sure. Is that it? Um, I had a couple people ask me um, about the, uh, the train derailment up in yeah. Palestine and mm -hmm. if that has any effect on our water. Uh, currently, it does not. Uh, our water, our 30 year time of travel is right around the golf course. Mm -hmm. um, so, our aquifer, we're part of the Great, Great Miami Aquifer, which is where the city of Dayton gets theirs. Yep. Um, right now, there should not be any issues. Um, I know the ones that do have the potential is uh, Cincinnati mm -hmm. because they're right down the Ohio River yep. and they're still testing with no issues as of right now. So, um, the EPA has been just keeping us abreast if anything would move but there's barriers usually between our aquifers and the other uh many that are in the state of ohio okay i i i, I reassure them there was nothing but. and we test for vocs socs which are volatile compounds and stuff like that so i don't know how often but we do test for them dayton tests i think on a daily basis for them good yes sir thank you just to piggyback off is, how often, I know you've mentioned it numerous times, how often do we have our water tested? Who says daily? So daily for chlorine, um, hardness, pH, and then we do bacteria, so E. coli, coliform, all those type, is six a month. And then there's other testing we have to do a year. Lead and copper is once a year. Um, SOCs, VOCs. <laughs> trihalomethanes, all those various chemicals we do just a couple times a year. Could you do me a big, big favor if Mr. Root would be okay with it? Just because that would take me forever to write out. Just send that, just send me an email with that. Just well, I can, I can tell you where, the, do you know timing or do you want to see what the results are? Because they're- No, not the results, just of what we test for and how often. Um, consumer confidence report, it's on the website. Okay. Head or off. That should have everything. I believe that also has the the, um, the the number of times that we test and how often. It's on our website. If it doesn't, but it's a CCR report on our website. Cool. Thank you. Uh, but I'll follow up on the amounts that we do if we do it more than once a year or something like that. Great. But I believe, I thought it was on the CCR. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Yes. Sir. Well, Dan took my first question. I'll go to the second one. I've seen uh, several Choice One trucks around town are they starting on what do the traffic studies or are they starting for the uh, they're doing the survey work where they go out and look at the topography of the ground uh, so carlisle park main street um where i said they, they did fenwick they've been working behind howard's ig on the brubaker development they're 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 working for us along working for some clients that are working with for developers so you'll see them doing private work and our work all in the city of New Carlisle. So it's mainly for the developments? It, all, all kinds of stuff. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any, no one else? All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Kitko. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. Moving on to the city manager report under informational items, discussion topics, mayor's court, uh, case report, January and February attached. 
Uh, there is a typo in the February one. Uh, Mr. Runner did not pay a $2,000 fine. It was $235. I saw that. I saw that. Oh, drop, that drop the eight off that last one, because if that's the case, then we're going to make a lot of money <laughs> off our mayor's court. But that was a typo. I did call and confirm that today. Um, <laughs> Clark County Public Health update that is attached as well. So we had a meeting last week. We have a lot of interest with bringing alcohol to our city as far as sales goes um, in Precinct 1, namely. So we had a meeting yesterday, and one of the business owners had brought a piece of uh, information to me that I thought was actually genius. And um, the city itself cannot act, uh, let me back up, the state of Ohio requires someone to act as a petitioner. That has to be a qualified electorate of the city. So with that information, the city itself is, could not act on behalf of them because the city can't vote. However, the city council can. So there's a village called New Concord that they got this passed by their city council acting as petitioners for this ballot measure. So um, on the basis, sounds like a really fantastic idea. There's a lot of research I have to do to actually present councils a lot of formal information. I didn't want to do that without talking to you guys first to get a motion to see if there's any interest in me looking into that, potentially you guys sponsoring that and acting as petitioners to get sales of alcohol in our city. I mean, certain areas. On premise sales. On premise sales, yes. Uh, on premise consumption. consumption. Yes. Sales. Thank you. We already you. have sales. Yeah, on premise consumption. Sign me. Yeah, okay. me too. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. So, so did you motion? Let's, let's motion. So we have an official. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a excited. I don't think we need to at this point. I mean, I think we're good. Right <laughs> I'm already planning. Plan. Hold my beard. No pun intended. <laughs> How, I mean, so how, you, how would you like to work? Uh, make a motion for the city manager to further look into city council acting as petitioners for a ballot measure for alcohol? What he said, Jeff. Oh. What, what he said, what she's writing down. Can you get that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's good. Uh, Mr. Vice Mayor was our second. I second. Okay. All right. I so. Okay. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. That passes five to zero. I will have information for you at the next council meeting, if not sooner. Um, so moving on there, we got new shelter house. So we got some information. So February 9th, it, uh, it went out to bid. So the bid it, bidding is due on nine, uh, I'm sorry, eight, what is this? 223, I can't read my own handwriting, on uh, February 23rd. So good news for that. Um, so as soon as we have more information on that, how we're going to move forward, um, we will definitely let you know. Mr. Kiko is definitely involved in that project. Uh, we are very excited to have this come to fruition. Uh, our current shelter house, fees and policies. I'm going to be emailing council. There are some changes that I would like to make uh, that would be effective on March 3rd. Uh, those three changes are how we, uh, it's key refundable time. Uh, we also have cancellation. Right now it's Excuse me, Colleen, is it 24 hours or 48 hours for the cancellation? 72. 72 hours for the cancellation. We find that we're losing money because we'll have time to uh, rent it again out. So we're going to change that to 30 days. And the fee would go up $25 each for the resident and non-resident. The fees have not been increased since the early 2000s. So we had data to support that. I'm going to email council those changes. Uh, they will be effective March 3rd. Um, so when you guys look at that, just let me know what you think. Um, but we are excited to move forward with that. Question. Yes. Before you jump off that topic, I know that the new one's not built, but would you as, would it be safe to assume, I know you're going to do your research on it, and we'll probably discuss it, when the new one's built, and it's going to have more amenities, kitchen, microwave, all that good stuff, uh, the price on that one will be more, since this one is more of a basic room versus... Yeah, okay. for sure, for sure. And we are still, I just want to stress, even though we're raising, we are still significantly lower than area shelter houses. Mm -hmm. We are very, very, very affordable. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we intention, once we get that built and get specs out, we'll definitely involve council in that discussion. Um, but then we can, we can safe to assume it is going to be probably a little bit more expensive, yeah. you know. And then we can discuss what we're going to do with this particular location, continue renting it. If you guys want to do a kitchen build out with this one particular, how are we going to enhance this one? Because yeah. the new one's going to be very nice and we're excited about it. Yeah. For sure. Um, under waste management contract, so we need a renewal numbers to determine if we're going to, if I'm going to it's extend the bid or, uh, ex I mean, sorry, extend the contract and put it out to bid. I met with the rep last week. It was my understanding that he was actually going to bring renewal, renewal numbers with him. He did not. He's going to bring them to me here in the next couple of weeks. Um, he is seeing about a 5% increase across the board. I don't know if I'm trusting that number yet. Uh, my personal rates went up way more than 5%. So I'm actually going to see what his renewal numbers are and then kind of weigh the options uh, and then discuss it with council. Um, 
So again, until we have those renewal numbers, I really can't make a decision on what's, what's, what's the best way to do. Uh, I know generally that waste management here is pretty well received. We don't have really have any issues with them. Um, I think they you know, miss some things, but I think just, just the business that they're in, it's, it's going to happen. Uh, but for the most part, I think our citizens are really happy with waste management, especially the levels of service that we offer with the three carts. Um, so uh, more information to come on that. So we do have a BZA hearing. Uh, since you guys, since we do not have a formal Board of Zoning Appeals Board, Council is acting on that behalf. So Monday, March 6th, during the regular council meeting, we'll have a rear yard setback variance due to a residential addition. This is on short drive. I'm gonna write the case in the applicant's favor just because she's facing some undue hardships. Basically the size of her, the, the shape of her parcel is preventative from her to really be doing anything extending onto her house. The backyard's kind of shallow and it kind of points out like this. So very world shaped parcel. I don't think it's gonna cause any issues because it's in the back. Uh, but I'm definitely right in her support, but as council knows, March 6th, will be, you guys will be hearing that and voting on it. Uh, friendly reminder, City Council special meeting, Tuesday, February 28th, here at the Shelter House at 6.30 p.m. And that is uh, discuss the Parks and Rec Board and placement of the residential trash cans that, uh, based off that ordinance that was uh, tabled by council a few months ago. We have the traffic study presentation coming Monday, April 3rd, 2023, uh, uh, also here at the Shelter House during a regular council meeting. Uh, then the Habitat for Humanity, Clark County Land Bank, and City Manager presentation on land sale in Madison School Housing. And that is also Monday, March 6, 2023, during a council meeting. Uh, meeting. Uh, there is a non-binding letter of intent that potentially will be executed the day after. Um, again, I just want to stress that is a non-binding letter of intent, and I will email a copy of that out to council well before the meeting so you guys can review it. Should you have any concerns with it, just bring it up at that night, and then we'll address those. Um, I do believe that's all I have for the city manager report. So I'll be happy to entertain any questions or any uh, uh, issues that may come up. Yes. Mr. Vice Mayor. The last meeting you said you were going to look into parking on the main business block. Mm hmm I don't have any information for you yet, so I'm still looking into that. And we're expecting our parking tickets to arrive when? It's months down the road. We'll have plenty. <laughs> I just <laughs> want Garmin to get his book and feel like he has to use it right away. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Right. sure. But there's still a little bit more research I'm doing, to be honest with you. Exactly. Um, and I haven't, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't had time to dedicate too much to it, but it is on my to-do list to get done for you. I know it's important. No offense, sir. <laughs> Good. I'm done. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Mr. Cook, anything? I'm sorry. Did you have anything? No. Okay. Uh, what I was asking, I don't know if you want me to wait to other business or do it on your report about timing. For, oh, do it now. I okay. like it. Great so idea. I, was, I was thinking it would be interesting to try adjusting our council meetings to uh, 6 p.m. instead of 6.30. I mean, it's only 30 minutes, uh, but it helps them out. I think that would be nice. Uh, some of them don't live directly here near New Calio, so um, we could try it if it doesn't work or it gets too tight on certain schedules we can always go back anybody have any issues with that do that we need to change uh, change the rules of council <clears throat> we just need to make a motion to uh mm -hmm. oh nine. i would love that um it is i think it is stated in the rules of council to be honest with you um but we've changed it before so we would yeah. just have to amend the rules yeah so i have to go do the resolution so at the march 6 meeting what I can do is have the resolution draft, drafted. You can vote on it that day. Okay. Then it takes two weeks to become effective, okay. which adds up, lines up perfectly. I was going to suggest if you're going to do that, make it effective like uh, a month from now, so we have time to adjust. And then two, we have some cases coming up for the March 6th meeting. I don't want to have to say, hey, now you're, you got to be here at 6 as opposed to 6.30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, even if we do the resolution, it'll be effective about the same time as the March 21st or whatever meeting that is. So I think we're and good. is that okay with you? I mean, is that? Oh yeah, we do not mind that at all. That's I mean, awesome. I just figured it might make it easier on you guys. It is. I mean, I, I mean, I adjust my time in the morning uh, more often than not on council days, just because I have a dog and stuff like that. Um, but to get home at nine o'clock or nine thirty, and then you know have to settle down and get back up here. But it is part of our job. We are graciously do whatever council wants us to do. But I think from our standpoint, we're not going to argue a six o'clock move start closer. time. Move closer. <laughs> Yeah, right. be a team player here. We, we have some new houses going up. Yes, this. they're not <laughs> modern. They're not. They're yeah. Howie, they're Howie made the move. Get with it. They, if you, Dan, if Dan can get them to build a house like I live in that's super modern, then I'll consider it. 
I was saying you move closer, Howard, is what I was how, how my, my lord, how much closer do you want him to move? <laughs> no, not, no, not him. I'm saying you need to follow suit. Oh, gotcha. Oh. Gotcha. Gotcha. No, he's plenty close enough. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right, so well, no, I would yeah. love to. It's just, it's just now's not the time. Yep, I, I got you. So, all right, well, that's all I had on that. Sure. Thank you for the report. No, and thank you for thinking of us. That's actually that's great. We appreciate that. Okay, so moving mm -hmm. on to, um, yeah, we can skip comments from members of the public. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is the only thing I've ever seen it without. The least yeah. The last time it was on the six, we had one. Oh, and then, Weird. Since the citizens know we're doing a good job and they trust us all the time. Or what? <laughs> <laughs> Where's Dolly? Helps me a lot. Where's Dolly? I'm sorry. Where's Dolly? Yeah. Let's go. Oh, Sully, I don't know. All right, so moving on. No comments from members of the public. Resolutions. Uh, Ms. Berner, if you would, please. All right, we have resolution 2023 20, 20, 20. 07, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A final resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with the Ohio Department of Transportation, ODOT, for improvements to State Route 235, Dayton Lakeview Road, from SLM 3.95 to 3.97 and Main Street from SLM 3.97 to 5.09 dash PID 1085 48. I don't have my glasses on. I can't really read those numbers. Sorry for the odd uh, ordinance title. Mm -hmm. All right, Council. Move to accept it. Second. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Bond. And for an explanation of this ordinance, I'm going to defer to our assistant city manager, Mr. Kicko. So this is the final piece of legislation for the resurfacing of 235, where we're required to uh, pay 20% of that. The 80% is administered by the state through four, uh, federal funds. The current estimated amount is $115,774. Once this is effective, the finance director will send a check up to ODOT for them to put in their coffers for when the project goes. And then when bids come in, if the bids end up coming in a little high, um, we could be responsible for 100% over the uh, level of federal amount. So basically, we currently have 130,000 saved. So if it goes over 130,000, we would have to do a, a slight adjustment to the budget. But that's where we sit currently. Council, any discussion? Yeah, just for the record, this is from Galewood to Water Dog. Uh, this is from, yes, Galewood the Water Dog. Thank you. Well, it doesn't go at all past Galewood, it stops there. So, so the other phase was done in 2000 and when we did the widening. Right. Yeah, so they'll keep them separated. Okay. That'd probably been another like 500,000, so another probably $200,000. Oh. Remember the public. Pull hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 We're in a meeting. <laughs> Future uh, city council over here. <laughs> Quiet in the audience. <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> All right. Uh, where are we at? Call for the vote, please. Call for the vote. Yeah, call it. All right. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Robold. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. That's accepted five zero. Before you read the next one, I was wanting to comment since before we were interrupted. Um, <laughs> it would probably actually be better that they don't touch that because I'm assuming there will be alter be that that whole road could be altered or adjusted with the developments, new driveways and things of that nature. So. Yeah, probably. But I would say that uh, you're probably ten years out when that would normally be resurfaced at least. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on, we have ordinance 2023-08, introduction tonight, public hearing and action. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute a memorandum of understanding that amends the current collective bargaining agreement regarding union wages. Council. So moved. Second. Uh, second by Mr. Roadwell. <clears throat> Explanation of this ordinance. Um, we set our union wages uh, three years at a time. 
So when the, this was originally negotiated, um, the, we were basing it on the financial outlook at the time, but we had a, a very a better year that we projected. So I would like to suggest that we reopen that and give the hourly employees a full one dollar raise, opposed to the seventy-five percent raise, seventy-five cent raise that was indicated in the original contract. That's any discussion. Chairman, I'm good. You, you were in deep in thought there. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Robold? Yes. That's accepted 5 0. Thank you for that. All right. We have Ordinance 2023 09 and Ordinance Amending Section 238.03 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle regarding the Division of Fire. Did we miss 08? No move. We just did 08. We just did 08. Sorry, did Okay, never mind. Okay, so who was my was Mr. First? Cook was motion, second by Mr. Rogel. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mason, this ordinance, this is another one that requires council approval. Um, so we had indicated that we would like to increase the fire pay. We had originally wanted to wait to after May, uh, after the current levy came out. Um, but there's a lot of discussion with that, so I decided to put it in front of council. Should council want to decide on that? Council any discussion? When you're ready, please. All right, Mayor Lowry. I'm going to abstain uh, due to um, conflict of interest where I have an employee member who works there. Now. Yeah, Weird, huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah I'm probably Vice Mayor Grimm. It's just a boot. And it's yes. <laughs> okay. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. And Councilman Robo? Yes. All right, that passes. Thank you for that. Congratulations, Vice Chair. Thank you. Ordinance 2023-10. You ain't getting a raise yet. And it's ordinance establishing compensation for the tax administrator. Council. Move to accept it. Second. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Rode. Uh, this is another ordinance that requires uh, council approval. Um, so this would establish compensation rate for our tax administrator. Any questions, Council? Are you ready, Ms. Burner? Mayor Lowry? Uh, yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Robo? Yes. Ordinance 2023-11, Ordinance Establishing Compensation for the Director of Public Service Assistant City Manager. So moved. Second. Explanation of this ordinance. Uh, this ordinance requires council approval and if passed, uh, would set the compensation rate for a Director of Public Service uh, slash Assistant City Manager. Council, any discussion? Uh, I'm just gonna add two cents to this. Um, I know that Mr. Kitko was taking on new responsibilities and he was given a pretty good raise, um, I believe last year. And I know we discussed this a little bit, I think in, in, in meetings and whatnot. Um, at, at this, hang on, let me find it here. Give me one second. I'm going behind, I apologize. Two seconds here. Yeah, I mean, with the with the raise that he had received last year, I just I would feel comfortable just bypassing it this one year and then picking him back up with a normal annual raise starting next year. That's Gatz's decision, sir. Yeah, I mean, it's just, sure. that's just just my personal two cents on it. That's all I had to say. And when you're ready, please. Mayor Larry. Uh, no. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? No. Councilman Robold? Yes. All right, that passes three to two. Moving on to Ordinance 2023 
2012, an ordinance establishing compensation for the finance director. Gotcha. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Rubal. Uh, explanation of this ordinance this also requires council approval. Um, if it passed, it will set the compensation for our finance director. Your discussion, council? Things are much, much uh, operating much more smoothly now. Thank you. Move approval. Yeah. Um, anyone else? I, I didn't hear what you said. Things are operating much more smoothly now. Um, I was just going to add, similar to this uh, on this one, I have no problems with annual raises. Um, I think everybody should get an annual raise. I think this percentage is a little higher than what I would like it to be. I, I think raises, you know, should be, you know, unless it was completely promoted like Mr. Kitko was uh, last year, which I think was, you know, given for the, the responsibilities that he was taking on. Uh, I, I think every one of you guys do a great job. I just think the percentage is a little high for me. Uh, with you know over the six with the past six years prior to um, you know we've seen thirty thirty four thousand dollars in raises over the past six years so uh, again I'm not against the raise this year I would just prefer it be a little bit lower a couple, couple points lower in the 2.5 range or even two but other than that I appreciate your opinion if I could reboot that. Um, so managers were given hefty raises over the past three years to be brought up because we were significantly lower than uh, area municipalities. Um, the 3.2% was given because that's what the union was getting without the additional 25 cents. Now that the unions get to the additional 25 cents, they are now getting much more than a 3.2% raise. So that 3.2% raise for the tax administrator, the finance director was based off what the union was getting. 3.2% uh, over a whole financial budget is really not that a lot, and it's more in line with the cost of living raise. But I do, uh, uh, we have gotten significant raises, but again, to stress, that was because we were severely underpaid prior to those significant raises. I also have to remember, she came on board in like 14, 15. Yeah. And we had to pay quite a bit more to get her. Well, because we went on a task to raise our administrative raises because we didn't want to see a lot of turnover. So your administrators are still underpaid. Um, so we're working to alleviate that, but we'd like to do it step ways to go. Um, but, you know, as we achieve this, you know, moving forward, we're not going to see these massive eight, nine percent raises with your administrators anymore. They're going to be more in line with cost of living raises. Um, but. When I value this stuff and I look at the stuff, it's based off their performance. And, you know, Ms. Harris has got our books so well organized um, and moving great with audits and all that great stuff that, you know, when you look at that 3.2%, again, it was just very comparable to what the union was getting. Uh, and, and I would agree. I'm not knocking anybody's books Absolutely. out of all three of you, the whole line. Um, this, I mean, it's just. Just my two cents, my opinion. Absolutely, and we appreciate your opinion. Sure. Anyone else? When you're ready, please. Mayor Lowry. Uh, no. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? No. Councilman Robo? Yes. My pass is 32. Thank you. Ordinance 2020-30-13, Ordinance Establishing Compensation for the City Manager of the City of New Carlisle. Yep. I guess I'm Peggy tonight. Move to accept. <laughs> second. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Rosen. Uh, explanation of this ordinance. Um, it is council required. Um, should it be passed, it sets the compensation rate of the City Manager. Mm -hmm. Council, any discussion? No. I was just wait because it looked like he was had something you might want to say. Again, this this looks a little high to me, just percentage wise. I'm not diminishing what you do or whatever, but just mm -hmm. comparable percentage wise. Um, it just looks a little high based on some of the other increases over the past several years. 
Um, but that's yeah, that's all. I appreciate your opinion, but we discussed it in executive session why it's what it is, and that's what was resolved in the council because that's what council agreed upon in executive session. And when you look at my performance over the past year, I just want to remind council over the year 2022. What I brought to council was about 700 new homes and about a million and a half of revenue coming up a year because of those homes. And on top of that, how much city operations have improved, not since in 2021, but 2022 and years before that. So when you look at that, to be example, there's a village in New Carlisle, I mean, village in Ohio called Village of Delta, and their population is 3,378. They have a $7 million operating budget. So very comparable to New Carlisle, but we got around 2,000 more of them. They're hiring for a city manager up to 105. So again, we are very under, I, I personally am underpaid, uh, more so than any other managers. Um, so my personal goal was to be where, uh, where we were at on the legislation, and that's what was discussed in executive session, which is why we have the number in front of council tonight. Was you done? Yeah, that's it. Mr. Cook. I missed the executive session. Primarily, I'm concerned with the citizen feedback. We got a fire levy coming up. I'm greatly concerned with what they're going to think about the fact that we're giving out raises. And at this point, I'm, I'm going to have to vote no. I appreciate that. So my salary was disclosed on Facebook, I think, a couple years ago, and the citizenry actually was saying how much underpaid I am with the value that I bring to the citizens. So I think that the citizens would like, would I would assume, would value that as well since they did a couple years ago. But council just gave out raises to everyone before me, so I would expect the same gratitude since I manage the people that you just gave raises to. You finished, sir? I'm done. Mr. Rubel, a couple things. One, I, I have a problem. We already discussed and agreed to this in executive session. Two, $100,000, $80,000, I'm sorry, guys, is, is not a lot of money. That, that budget ain't going to pass. I mean, that's a budget that's a budget the top 1%, that's a budget the top 2%. I mean, for what these guys do, and I'm going to use myself as an example versus what I do. And out of those three, there's only one who makes more money than me. And I do nothing for a living. <laughs> I, I, do, I have no responsibilities, nothing like what these three do. And, and, and Randy's right. For, for the amount of, hopefully, development that's coming into this city over the next seven to 10 years and the progress this city's made over the last five, or the last three since I've been on the council, um, for us to be bickering over what, what amounts to uh, $5,000 in the grand scheme of things is, is ministry. And what, what we're walking very lightly on and treading on is telling our administrators, the people who run the city day to day and keep the city afloat and are always, always on call, hey, we don't value you enough that we don't want to give you guys raises when we are seeing the highest inflation that we've seen since the 70s. You know, 3% doesn't even cover cost of living. 5% barely covers it. Most companies are giving out 7 to 9% pay raises. That's what I've gotten in the last three years. Um, it's just, I mean, it's, it's, it's really, and I understand, you know, well, citizens, well, citizens need to also understand that if you don't pay your employees good, you're going to have the turnover that we've had in the past. And we're going to have the issues that we've had in the past. If you want to keep good employees, you have to make sure they are compensated well. And, and I just, you know, again, we, we had these discussions in the executive session, these numbers we all agreed upon Why we were in the executive session. I just don't understand why now we're, we're, we're backstepping because we're afraid of a little bit of Facebook pushback, you know, afraid of what a citizen might say. That's why we're here. We're, we're speaking for the citizens. If they don't like what we have to say, well, then come November or, or May, they, they can voice their opinions. You know, but I mean, you know, I'm so. 
You good? Can, can I say one more? Sure. Um, just don't misunderstand what I said. Um, <clears throat> this is this is my first time through this process. <clears throat> in in my work experience, our business, I'm just used to doing reviews with people before giving raises, and and that process never happened. Um, I guess, or I wasn't a part of it anyway. But um, so for me to just hand out raises is a little foreign to me without some type of a review process to be able to give feedback and get feedback and, and that kind of thing in an official type of a setting or whatever. So um, even, yeah, so even though I say it's, it's a little, seems a little high, that doesn't mean necessarily that I'm going to vote against it. Uh, no. I'm just, uh, yeah. okay. just saying in the overall scheme of things, and, and maybe it's something that we need to look at the process a little differently, I think, in the, in the future. Well, let me go ahead, because I've got to answer what he's saying. Well, I, I think, I mean, Randy has done evaluations on his administrators. Um, and it's up to council to do an evaluation on Mr. Bridge. That's if Mr. Bridge hasn't had an evaluation, doesn't 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 fall on his shoulders. That falls on our shoulders. Um, you know, um, so you know, we got to not mirror around and look ourselves in the, in, in, in the mirror and say, well, we haven't given him an evaluation. Shame on us, then. So, um, you know, but I know Randy has, has has sat down with each one of his administrators and, and gave them their personal evaluations and. Their, their strengths and weaknesses and where they need to work on it. And, and so, um, and, and that, then that's, that's a question. I mean, you know, my first year on council, it was brought up. Um, you know, Randy hadn't been given an evaluation in, in, in quite a few years. He might put one together, um, and it was a good one, um, whether it was fair or not. You know, it's to be, you know, personal opinions. Um, but, uh, so yeah, no, I agree. You know, you know Randy should, should be evaluated every year. It's just finding the, the right platform and the right form to, to do it. So. And, and that's what, you know, basically what you said is, is accurate. That's why I voted for the other increases because oh, yeah. he's responsible for their reviews. He recommends those to us based on um, him being the and, and I think, you know, we, we can look at the reviews <laughs> and look at the, the suggested, you know, increases. And we have contact with, with the administration at least once a month. Some of us talk to more than you know the one council meeting a month. I mean we see the reports they they produce. They're they're you know we, you know just based off of that communication and, and discussion we know they're they're more than qualified and, and deserving of what, what has been put down on these papers. So, yes sir, sorry. No, 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 I was just letting you finish. I didn't want to interrupt. So yeah, Ben on your no, um I'd actually spoke with Mr. Bridge uh, maybe a couple months ago. And I did mention him. I was going to have him do a uh, an executive session, and it probably on totally on me. I forgot to have him put that executive session on, and I remembered it. But now we've got two people out. I don't want to move forward with it until everybody's here to do his his review. So yeah. that's that's on Fair. me. Yep. Uh, totally. No um, problem. So, but it will get done. Um, but as far as um, you know, you know, it's it's. I'm not worried about Mr. Rodell as far as what you know. People were saying is about the raises. It's you know it's it's not because I think Randy does a bad job. I think he does a great job. I think he's believe it or not. I think he's improved since his last time we did your review. I really do. I, th I think the I think you guys have all done a great job. I know Colleen handles the books better than anybody that we've had. At least since I've been on council. Um, you know I just it's the percentages I just have an issue with. It's just it's just a tick too high for me. I, I would like to see it in a 2.5 range. I know that you say that you guys are are. Or a little bit under the bar in comparison to other cities, um, you know. But I, I'd say once you know, in a, in a year or so, you should be caught up with just about everybody in our size, I assume, especially with these housing developments going. And and um, that's just that's just where I'm at. It's not. It's just a personal how I'm looking at the numbers. I mean, like I said, over the over the past six years, um, you know, there was a you know a total of thirty four thousand and change. Uh, for the city manager, thirty-four thousand and change for the, you know, the uh, 
finance director. And then Vicki Taylor, her raise over the past six years was a little lower at 13200 <coughs> And then Mr. Kitko's raise over the past six years equaled around 30, a little under 32000 So, I mean, they, they've, you guys have all gotten, I think, decent raises over the years. Um, you, you, the past couple for, for Mr. Kitko and Mr. Bridge have been pretty good raises. So I, I, I don't feel bad about, I, it's not that I don't want to give you a raise. I would just like to come, drop it back two points. And then next year, another two points or whatever. Council agrees. And I know you guys said that we all agreed at the at the um, at the executive session. Um, you know, I don't I don't think we were all in agreement. I mean, I had pretty much a similar opinion when I had left. Um, so, but that's just where I stand. Just just to piggyback off of of, of you, um, modern technology and the internet. Um, the average company pay raise in 2023 is 4.6 percent. I wish I worked for one of them. Mine's 2.5, all four years. I told you what mine was. Mm -hmm. I have some friends that work in government and they got 4%. Yeah. That was what they got. Mm -hmm. so, like I said, national average is 4.6. So, um. Look, can I ask you a question, Mr. Bridge? Sure. And be honest with me because I know you're mad, which is fair. Well, enough. the vote hasn't been done yet, but it's going to be very discouraging if it fails. Okay. Being financially cautious and, and smart, as you guys have done a great job. You know, where's it at? I have it on here. I'm looking at two different screens, so I don't have to keep switching back and forth. If you're asking me to drop my percentage. Um, no, I'm not asking you. I'm just saying, I mean, you truly feel that from going from a 5.3 to let's just say 2.5 for conversation. But that's a, and I'm not trying to be rude when I say this. You feel that's kind of a smack to the face yeah i do because we went to executive session you guys know my personal goals I understand. Uh, and, I, and, I'm not, I'm not and honestly the city could afford much more than that um again i just want to stress again our raises have been significant because of historically how this council has paid their bosses their administrators you're playing catch up that's what you're doing if you're asking me 5.3 percent maybe if we would have looked at my first couple years when i got no raises at all that 5.3 would be a 2.5 now Mm -hmm. uh, but there's no reason why a position, a person in my position, with what I am responsible for, should be making less than six figures. And that's what I, I my thing is $100,035. It is just right above that mm -hmm. mark that I personally wanted to hit. And yes, I do think it's well deserved. When you look at what's going on in this city in this past decade since I've been your city manager, it is nine day difference. It is absolute nine day difference. I've had many opportunities to leave. I've chosen to stay, you know, because I believe in the city. Uh, to me, it's discouraging that we're sitting here discussing $5,000. We take that divided by 12. Um, I'm worth more than that, to be honest with you. Um, I know I'm worth more than that. Um, a decade into this, having the experiences that I have, should I go somewhere else, you're going to be paying more of that to replace me. Um, and that's, that's something you guys will have to take into consideration at some point in time because I'm not gonna hold myself back from my personal goals for the benefit of anyone. I have personal goals. I have exuded my job responsibilities since day one. Uh, when I was hired, I told you guys it would take five to 10 years for you to see that change in the city, and you see that. Um, the amount of hours I put in, I was working Saturday, I worked Sunday. I was building questions about your Carlisle Park yesterday with a citizen at 10.30 o'clock, 10.30 10, 10, 10 at night. So the things I do to make myself available to your citizens is pretty impressive. Uh, so yes, I would, I would highly encourage council to pass this ordinance just, just for you know good measure, good sake. Um, and again, I don't think 5.3 percent is, is pretty high. But we've talked about this with my administrators. We talked about that with your finance director, who was at the executive session. Um, and should this not pass? Now I'm only making a couple thousand dollars more than your finance director. And no offense to Ms. Harris, she's a great employee, but I'm responsible for way, way more. Uh, one, I just want to add one more thing. As, as far as what you are worth, and I, I, I'm not doubting or knocking anything you say, I would agree with you. But again, for me, it's a financial, um, you know, it's a finance, you know, looking at just the numbers that we've been provided. Um, you know, but I also go back to, to you know, a year or two ago when we were discussing the union contract, we wanted that dollar raise for the hourly employees for each year, but we were told that they couldn't do it, 
that they would feel better with 75 cents because you guys weren't comfortable giving that extra quarter. I just have a hard time believing that that quarter was such a huge difference that we couldn't do it, but this is okay. I know that this is a little bit different time. It's a year or two difference. So, yeah, let me explain that to you. Okay. Uh, I had a massive heart attack and I was in a hospital, so I was not part of that union negotiation. Okay. And Sarah said, and this, and Mr. Kiko did what they thought was best. Mm -hmm. Why you have in front of you is that 25 cents of addition because the finances look a lot better. Correct. Right. Um, so we have alleviated that concern. They are getting their dollar raise. Uh, but again, you just gave 25 cent raises to a group of employees that get raises no matter if they perform well or don't. So if I don't understand what I'm confused about, to be honest with you, is why there's so much discussion about a 5.3% raise for your top administrator when you just gave out raises to everyone in the city. And you're concerned about $5,000 in the budget? That's what, that, I'm having a hard time comprehending that. Well, for me, I, I'm not, I didn't only speak on yours, I spoke on three. Sure. So sure. I'm, not, I'm not singling you out. Oh, I got you, I understand. Mr. Mayor. Sir. Sir. When people ask me why, our streets are in such bad shape. I always tell them what happened. The previous councils uh, did not get it done because there was no money. Now that the, 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 our financial situation is getting better, we're doing the streets like crazy. More often. Yes. <clears throat> Same thing here. Um, we held off on giving raises to him. Um, I agree he's worth it. We can afford it. To say no would be silly. I'm done. All right. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Anyone else? All right, Ms. Burner, if you would, please. Mayor Lowry. No. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. No. Councilman Roble. Yes. Passes three to two. Ordinance 2023-14, an ordinance amending section 452.03 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle that addresses prohibited standing or parking places. Council. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Cook, or, uh, second by Mr. Rogo, sorry. Uh, an explanation of this ordinance. Uh, this amends uh, section 452.03 of our code that has to deal with prohibited parking place, prohibited standing or parking places. I just wanted to stress because I had to Google it myself. Standing does not mean standing. It means leaving your car standing. Yes. Uh, so it doesn't mean that you personally can't stand on the sidewalk. Uh, that if you have anything to add to that, please let me know if I'm, I'm standing, uh, speaking correctly as far as that standing term. Is the car just unattended on the roadway? Is that what it is? Yeah, it's an abandoned vehicle. Great. I mean, if, if it's been there for several days and stuff, I mean, we usually will tag it if I mean, we'll get a complaint or something saying the vehicle's never been moved. Got to get a hold of the register out there and see why this vehicle has been moved. We tag it if it hasn't been moved within 48 hours, we tell it. Thank you. Hmm. Thank you. Council, any questions? I didn't look it up, but what did it say before? Did we not have this in there before? Was it not strong enough language? Or? So I'm, I'm sorry for explaining this to you. So when we amend code here, when you see italicized, italicized text, that's what we are adding. And any yeah. normal text has been, is already there. It's already there. Yeah. So basically what we currently have now is on the sidewalk, except the bicycle. So we're going to add curb or street lawn area. parked in the front yard um, and the same thing with uh, a 14 our code did not have any uh, discussion of our painted yellow curves so we added onto that to uh, catch that hmm. okay I'm done good yeah All thank right. you anyone else and this was very riveting work by the way That's very interesting <laughs> when you're ready Ms. Burner Mayor Lowry yes Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Roblox? Yes. That passes 5 0. Ordinance 2023 15, an ordinance amending section 452.05 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle that addresses selling, washing, or repairing a vehicle upon a roadway. Council. 
Anyone? Bueller? <laughs> I'll make a motion. Second. Uh, explanation of this ordinance. This amends for, uh, section 452.08. So in this particular ordinance, anytime you see uh, strike through legislation that's being removed and italicized text is what we are adding. So when you look at the original language, it didn't have anything about um, washing and repairing the road. It just said about selling. So we we're adding more terminologies to catch the head, what the heading means, which is selling, washing, or repairing. Any questions or comments, Council? So someone can't have their car parked in front of their house and wash it? You cannot park. You, can, you should not be able to wash your car in the street. <laughs> I mean, some of those houses aren't that far from the street, but I don't know. And it's more getting run over. Okay, Anything else? Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you're ready, please. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Rubble. Yes. That passes yeah. Ordinance 2023-16. An ordinance amending. Ordinance 2021-36 that established a schedule of fines and costs in a bail box <coughs> for the city's So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Cook, second by Mr. Bond. And explanation of this ordinance. So the past few ordinances we did kind of culminate into this. So when we were looking at the parking section of our code, we realized that there's a lot of stuff we need to add. So during that addition, we actually realize in our section of our code that we need to actually add additional language, which you guys just approved. <coughs> so should this ordinance be approved, this would amend the bond schedule to add everything that's in the bond schedule that's in italicized text. And we're not subtracting, um, but we are subtracting parking on highways. I mean, parking on the street, but leaving that way. Council, any questions or comments? When you're ready. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Rogol. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mayor yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. That passes five to zero. May it be the last time we amend the bond schedule, please. Uh, the next three are read only. So we have ordinance 2023-17, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on March 6th. An ordinance amending the city of New Carlisle's estimated resources available to appropriate for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2023. Ordinance 2023-18, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on March 6th. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement by by and between the city of New Carlisle and the state of Ohio Attorney General for the collection of delinquent income tax debt. Ordinance 2023-19, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on March 6th. An ordinance authorizing the establishment of an agency fund named Credit Memo Clearing Fund for the purpose of holding utility bill overpayments and applying those credits back to customer accounts. Would you like me to read other business? Oh, I'll take care of it. You, okay. you rest. Other business. Coffee and Donuts with City Council, March 4, 2023, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the fire station. Uh, before we wrap up, we will need to, uh, ex and let me finish before you jump on it, uh, we need to excuse Ms. Eggleston and Mr. Lindsay. Uh, Mr. Lindsay will be out for two, possibly three months uh, for some uh, medical issues, uh, but he will return unless, you know, mm -hmm. you're otherwise or get any other updates. So we will need a motion to excuse Ms. Eggleston first. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Bond, second by Mr. Rogel. Any discussion? Are you ready, please? Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Graham? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Rogel? Yes. That's accepted. 5 0. And then a motion for Mr. Lindsay to be excused. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Bond, second by Mr. Rogel. Any discussion, Council? And when you're ready. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Rogel? Yes. Except 5 0. All right. Any other topics before we wrap? No, sir. Um, we have an executive session, so we're going to get into that. Um, but before we do in that, um, one of the things that we had talked about at the last session that we had, and we could discuss it because not everything is privileged in executive session as we learned in Sunshine Law training, um, I had suggested that Council have me work on salary ranges for your administrative staff.
What that's going to look like is example the village I told you about Delta who's hiring for a city manager for 105,000. Their salary range is 65 to 105, and that's for a much smaller municipality. Most places, if not all, have a little area, a little range that you work within. So for like finance directors, say you make 65 to 97. And whatever works in there, it is discretion of the city manager, and that's how it's supposed to go. Um, I think that would alleviate some of these questions about these raises. Uh, that if we have a guiding table, similar like we like with the union wages, what we do, we have a range in there, and then we just work within those ranges. So I'm going to research that a little bit. Maybe at the next council meeting, I'll present some information to you. But I think that may alleviate some questions about this, and it really establishes what we can expect when we work in these positions. We know that we're not going to exceed this ever, you know? Um, but I think it would be beneficial for us to put that into your administrative code some way, shape, or form that allows councils to guide that, but it also gives your manager realm to work with within those uh, guidances. So the reason why you had the ordinance in front of you this time and not passed is uh, Lynette Dinkler, our former um, law director, interpreted raises as my, so my sole responsibility after the initial ordinance that hires the staff. Our current law director thinks differently. So he thinks that each raise needs to come to you before an ordinance. Um, our code contradicts itself because later in the non-charter code, it says raises are strictly my responsibility. Usually in most cities, that's how it goes. But our charter kind of backs us into that. So it's always up to the current law director's interpretation. Prior, I had a law director that would back me. Now I have a law director that would say it need to go through ordinance. But I think if we have that range, it allows me to work within that range and it sets expectations for council and also the employee. Um, but I think it'd be very beneficial for us to look into that. Well said, sir. Sure. All right. Uh, need a, well, once we move on motion into executive session, we'll do a quick five minutes. So I have a couple of things. Oh, sir. As I understand, we have a special meeting next Tuesday mm -hmm. for parks and rec and trash cans. Mm -hmm. and that's the only special meeting we have. I think that's all I've been able to find. The Charter Review Committee spent a lot of time, a lot of effort, coming up with recommendations. And what did we do? Nothing. We need to do something about it. Okay. If it takes a special meeting, so be it. But we need, we can't just let let uh, let these people work just. Go for not. I agree. So what would you suggest, sir? A special meeting. Any ideas? Do you, what I can do is we did have, we did a few pages already. Mm -hmm. um, and then we stopped. I can email the progress we've made since. Um, so you guys at least have that. And then when you want to have the meetings, up to you guys, for sure. Um, but I'll at least give you the information of what we've stopped at. And then that way we know how much, I think we got quite a bit to go. So I think we left off at the city manager section, um, which is section four or five. Anyway, not important. But I think we still got a significant amount to go. We were just talking about this today, about how it's important that council does that. There's some things in there that should go on there with the CIP and three months before the submission of the budget that would really help our, if we can get that alleviated, that we can just do it at the same time. But it's very important for that to be finished. Yeah, I think that I think originally we got it done and it was when we were starting to lead into all these big meetings with the housing developments and we said we you know since we weren't going to put it on until November mm -hmm. that we were going to just let it set for a little bit till we got through that and I think you know or at least I definitely let that slide a little too long so what is today's date oh it's too late to amend the current legal ad to include that so did you yes. mm -hmm. well adding that is probably going to take yeah, it's like a more time meeting for <laughs> so we're going to discuss it at the next meeting or do you have a day? Hey, when's, when's Peg going to get back? Uh, oh, hey, we put a big one into the March 4th. I mean, the March, this one. Yeah, she should be no, back the day before. Coffee and donuts. Yeah, I already did that, too. Oh, you did. And you're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is probably going to take some time. Yeah. And if we just tack it on to next Tuesday's meeting, we're going to be here all night. Right. Oh, we can't tack it on the next Tuesday. The legal ad's already been placed. Okay. It's too late then. then. Well, that takes care of that. Yeah. Or if we put it in a regular meeting, we'd need to bring our sleeping bag. Um, March 6th is not looking to be too heavy. I was going to say before. I mean, I mean other than the presentation. Oh, you got the BZA hearing, though, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, BZA hearing, you got that. I mean, I 
I'd like to add it to, to the, I mean, the first of the month meetings are, are fairly tame. Um, you know. Sure, uh, we might be able to knock some of them out at the first meeting. Because I'm going to be honest with you guys, in about, about six weeks, my schedule gets crazy. Way too. <laughs> well, I want to just put it on there. We can knock some out and we. Even if it's just a page. Even if it's a four or five sure, pages. Get done. Yeah, okay. we can just knock it out. Are you okay with that? Let's do that. Because it's not going to go on the ballot for me, clearly. If you want to do anything that's no, if you want to put it on the November ballot, which it has to go on that cycle anyway, you got to have it three, three months prior to the election date. So that would put August. August. I would have it done by June or July, because then you have to do legislation and all that to put it on the ballot. Um, but I think if we just do the first one, and then maybe the first one in April, we should be able to get through all of it. Good with you to start. Mm -hmm. Awesome. You want it? So charter stuff at Mar March 6th meeting. Okay. Yeah. All right. I need a motion. Secondly. No. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Secondly. Something I brought up Third, before. Fourth. Fourth. Fifth. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, this is the last one. I'm joking. Something I brought up before, and it also went nowhere. Um, everybody that works for the city has gotten raises, except for those sitting on the side of the table. There has been no pay increase for council for 10, 15 years? At least. Is that how long I don't know, before I was on. Well before me. Do you want me to resend the data I collected for you guys on that a few months ago? Mm -hmm. Do you have that fresh? I think when I looked through it, it looked like we were well compensated for the size of our city. And was my impression when I looked through that data. but. How's that work? Because it takes effect at the next cycle. Right? Yeah, it doesn't. Like if we pass it, none of us would get it. It would be the next, or at least the next election cycle. Like if Dale or whoever was to rerun, it would mm -hmm. get on that cycle. <coughs> but then you would have some council members making more than others. I would make it effective after the last council member's term is over. You. It would, it would, as Mike has said, it would take effect on the next election, January 1, but that would leave Mr. Bond, myself. But we can make the effective date whenever we want. Not according no, you to can't, my you revised can't, you, can't, you can't make it like effective. You, know, you, you think the raise details your salary effective. while you're in office. Yeah, you can't raise your own. No, I know you can't raise your own. Let me ask you this, Mr. Bond, and I'm, I don't mind speaking out of place. So forgive me, Mr. Mayor. Um, if I remember correctly, I think I have the same interpretation of the data as you do. Um, one of the things that Mr. Cook and I have been wanting to do for a long time is have council sit on various boards, like a finance board, a public service board. Um, and maybe if we can get that going, because that's going to involve council a little bit more. Maybe that can justify a little bit of an increase. Because I think if you do that, more of your time is going to be acquired, obviously. Because you could, how that works is uh, we'll use finance as an example. You'll have a, a, a member of council sit on the board with Colleen, and then you'll have a few citizens on it, and you just get together and talk about city finances and what you think is best moving forward. But it gives a count, each council member a way into each little thing. Um, you can have one for your public service. Um, I want to start one for your city manager where I have one and I talk to a lot of the big time business owners at least once a quarter and go out to lunch and all that with them. So there's ways that we can improve um, and especially council with that involvement with these boards. And I know Mr. Cook and I have been wanting to do this for how long now? For quite some time. Um, even with your parks and rec, you'd have someone sit on the parks and rec board with the actual approved people. So it gives council that extra, you know, tidbit of information and, and an influence on, on what's being done. Um, so it's just food for thought. For, for later on. And then we can report back to the rest to of the To the rest of you, yeah, so how they do it. Um, just watch other council meetings. Um, councils that are, are more, a little bit, have more uh, organization and stuff like that with how they do all that board stuff. And what they do is like each each month, each, each, each council member give a report on that board. That's why we have committee reports on our agenda. Even just is that way. Huh? Have, Enan is that way. They have Enan several, does it. So maybe we model it off Enan. A council members on each committee mm -hmm. and they report at the council meeting mm -hmm. what happened. 
Well, I think it would greatly improve communication. Yes. Oh, for sure. If you're interested, Cleveland council members make 41000 a year. <laughs> I mean, we're doing good, but I mean, I mean, we can, we can make that happen. Call That's a bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else? Good? I'm good. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for your, the raises tonight. I know it's, these are it. tough decisions to have, and, but we appreciate it on this, and we truly do. All right. I need a motion to go into executive session, and then once that passes, so we'll take a five-minute break. Second. Motion by Mr. Cook, second by Mr. Vice Mayor. Everyone have a good evening. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Rodwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Greg? Yes. Motion moved to executive session. Accepted. 5-0. Right. Will we go back into regular session? Okay. Motion from Mr. Vice Mayor. Yes. Second. Second by Mr. Cook to go into regular session. All right. Councilman Rodwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. That's accepted by zero. Any other business? Move to adjourn. Second. Vice Mayor moves to adjourn. Second by Mr. Rogoff. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Count Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Rogoff? Yes. Passes 5-0. Good evening. All right, all.